Today I'd like to share with you our way of investigating motion in two directions. Now if I take this ball and I throw it, we would expect it to have a forward motion that's fairly constant and a downward motion that is accelerating and the result of those two motions give us, gives us a parabolic curve. Now we can see them all the time but what we'd like to do is analyze them a little bit closer. So I have a lab activity that I have my middle school students try and that is to slow down that movement uh, and record it so that we can actually analyze it a little bit closer. To start, we're going to take a piece of paper and divide it into several lines. Now that we have these lines drawn, the next thing I want my students to do is draw a single line across the top of the paper. Uh, about one inch down would be fine. Uh, and then I want them to measure from that line, well on this first one I would like them to measure down one millimeter and put a mark. The next line, I want them to measure down four millimeters, put a mark. The next one, nine millimeters. Next one, measure down 16 millimeters, put a mark, and so forth, going across the table. It is the square of the whole numbers is equal to the distance that the object will fall for each succeeding distance. That's what Galileo discovered. So that's what we're setting up on the paper, and then we're going to see if we can actually match it. So paper set up, it's ready to record the motion of this ball. This table is on a slant, so if I release the ball, the ball is being pulled down by gravity. Is it all straight down? To get it going across the table, we're going to use these little ramps that have erasers glued to the bottom of it, and that's going to give us a forward motion or a horizontal motion. And so when we release it, we see motion across and down, and we end up getting a resultant parabolic curve. Now, we want to record this, so to do that, we are going to take the ball and dip it into paint, put it on the roller, let it roll down the paper, and record the path using the paint mark that's being left behind. First thing I want my students to do is try it a few times without paint, see if they can find a position that will actually follow the path that they've recorded on the paper with those dots by measurements. See if they can match that. And some of my students have actually found it to max exactly. Okay. Once they've done that, then they're going to try and reposition the uh, height of the ball on the ruler, uh, get the ball moving faster, getting it moving slower, and see what happens to the parabolic curve as we make changes in the speed of the ball. I'd also like my students to try having the ball come up the paper and then back down again. So we put the ramp at the bottom of the paper, uh, put a few more, make it a little bit steeper by putting a couple of erasers underneath it, and then put it in paint, roll it so that the ball comes up and then goes back down again so that we can compare the path of it decelerating and the path of it accelerating and see how they compare. Ideally they would be mirror images of each other, but we find that they aren't because there's a little bit of friction taking place. This essentially is the lab. It is looking at motion in two directions. And I hope you found it interesting.